article. A friend of mine wrote it, so... Don't let me stand in your way. Please don't let me stand in your way. The last thing I want to be remembered as is an annoying blabbermouth. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to Action RPG. I'm your host, Aaron. And for today's video, we're headed to the world of Diablo 4. Server Slam is done. It's in the books. All the events are complete. And I'm happy to say we made it to level 20 and killed the world boss. So we're going to get our horse horn trophy thing, okay? IGN today put out a video, and I have not watched this yet. I have a feeling it's going to be comical, but I don't know. I don't know. It's from IGN, so, you know, you never know what they're going to say. Diablo 4, the eight biggest changes. And you got to, I only watched the first 30 seconds, and you got to see how they set up this video. I'm excited to watch it. Let's check it out together. Sometimes our paths in life are set to collide. We just don't know it. Diablo 4's next entry in Blizzard's iconic and highly influential action RPG series. While each Diablo game has had its own impact in the industry at large, with Diablo 2 popularizing the genre abroad and Diablo 3's real money marketplace not forgotten, Diablo 4 moves towards modernization. Adopting mechanics found in MMORPGs, the world of Sanctuary has changed in some surprising ways. While Blizzard has shown off world event quests and world bosses, which feel oddly similar to Smilegate's Lost Ark, the developer has gone a step further to change how some pivotal systems in the series have Worked. And some of these quality of life improvements have perhaps made the biggest splash in how players can approach their endgame builds. Here are some of the most significant changes we found in our hands on experience with the Diablo 4 beta. Okay, let's stop right here. Basically, what they're saying is D2 and D3, that's old. D4, they are modernizing it so that it looks more like Lost Ark. It's literally how this video is set up. Eight big surprises in D4. It could be titled eight things that are different than every other Diablo game. Okay, you got the setup. Let's do it. Are you out of your mind? He's not going to make it. He has to. Listen, Akarat. My eternal life protects me. No longer do players need to rely on RNG to add sockets to their rare or legendary items. Instead, with the right amount of gold and materials, the occultists can add sockets to your weapons, armor, and accessories. Before, players would need to re-roll one of the stats on an item for a chance at obtaining another gem socket. Those unfamiliar with the Diablo series may be wondering why this is such a huge quality of life improvement, but gems allow for players to add specific increased stat to an item based on the gem they are socketing in. Players can stack these stats through multiple gems being put into multiple pieces of gear, which result in min-maxing stats for the true endgame builds. Now that this element is no longer entirely random, players can immediately work on crunching those numbers and working towards their endgame build of choice. Okay, this true. is the story of their downfall. This is where the meat of some of Diablo 4's core systems lie. Aspects are attributes applied to legendary items that can grant passives in a way that can change the way you play the game. For example, specific aspects will increase the damage or even the rank of a specific skill, while others will generate unique effects for each of their respective character classes. This is fairly stock and standard in Diablo, but what makes it unique in Diablo 4 is the ability to remove and apply aspects with ease. Talking with the occultists will allow for players to apply aspects to rare or legendary items with gold and other specific materials. Materials. This means the passive you love on a legendary item won't go to waste once a better piece of gear drops, which eliminates a level of randomness found in previous games. It makes creating builds a lot easier assuming you have good luck and get what you want and encourages player to run dungeons and obtain guaranteed class specific aspects as well. By mother's blood. So I agree, but it also makes the feeling of something dropping and being awesome that basically gets taken away. Because every item can be a legendary item as long as you just complete the dungeon and you have the affix you want or you pull it off an existing legendary. There's goods and bads to it. It actually makes the game a lot easier. My mother's body. So uh, shall you. With this her glory. Items can be further enhanced in Diablo 4, empowering already great pieces of gear for that extra edge. While finding better items through slaying swaths of enemies is still the best way to obtain highly coveted legendary and rare items, players can now boost the stats of their gear through the upgrade system. It only costs a bit of gold and can give you that slight stat boost to keep your weapons relevant as you progress through the game. This is particularly great for players who find themselves attached to a certain item and want to hold off on swapping out a legendary for a rare item with only slightly better stats. How your mind races. 
we played on this. We we messed around with the crafting during Server Slam. It is the most basic system. It's literally put it in and then hit upgrade. It's that easy. Yes, I am Lilith, mother of sanctuary. A true cosmetic system has finally appeared in Diablo 4, one that eclipses the cumbersome system that was available in Diablo 3. Instead of needing to run back to town to transmogrify any shiny new piece of gear that drops on the ground, you can effectively create sets out of armor and weapons you've salvaged at the blacksmith that will override any item you slap on. Additionally, players can dye these individual pieces of armor free of charge, with the first outfit slot also free. Players will need to buy additional slots, but this is a huge step up from what happened in Diablo 3, and will always have you looking your best as you take on on the minions of hell. The Lords of Hell. That's kind of a weird one because I think back to D2, and when I'm holding that javelin, you know I have Titan's Revenge. And I've always felt, you know, I'm old school. I consider myself a classical ARPG enthusiast that your gear is your character. And if you're always switching that, I like being able to see someone and be like, oh, that's a storm shield, you know. You hear where I'm going with this, but it's fine. I mean, the more options, the better. Our, our world. Salvation lies not in the light, but in you. Players had their first taste of Diablo 4's world bosses with Ashava, a massive grotesque demon with sights for hands. And it is a promising look at what's to come. Like more modern online ARPGs, Diablo 4 has added world bosses into the game. These fearsome beasts take packs of players to destroy through intense concentration and cooperation. Utterly massive, this these fight bosses with are a true was of brutal. requiring players to be on it and dodge out of devastating attacks and plunge back into the fray at their own discretion. What makes these encounters so tense is that they are timed. Players only have 15 minutes to defeat the the world boss, but upon doing so, they will be rewarded a plethora of legendary items, making these encounters the best way to gear up. And it's a great feeling, the true sense of collaboration with others as well. I feel like that is the connection to Lost Ark. That's the MMO, the, the, the world boss, the working together, the shared world. We can't stop Lilith. We'll all be damned. As Diablo 4 embraces the MMO light formula that permeates its new systems, World Event Quests are an exciting new addition to the game. While Diablo 3 did have something similar in its adventure mode that allowed for players to enter randomly spawned dungeons at the behest of errant NPCs, Diablo 4 takes it in a broader direction. World Event Quests can either be triggered or appear at random throughout the world, each having its own objective players must complete in order to receive generous rewards. This can range from protecting a caravan under siege by demons, fighting off waves of enemies before a specific amount of time runs out, or even defeating foes on specific tiles to feed blood to a dubious altar. These almost always spawn rare enemies, which in turn can drop rare or legendary gear. It's a great way to keep players invested in the game while they move between story objectives or dungeons. Eternal light protects me. Eternal light protects me. Eternal light. There is no light here. You came to the darkness for knowledge. And all the knowledge you seek is here. While the Diablo series has no shortage of visually impressive cutscenes, especially for the time period in which each respective game was released, Diablo 4 has a surprising number of beautifully rendered in-game cutscenes. Unlike Diablo 3 where most of the story was told through stylized motion graphics or the scant but effective cinematics found in Diablo 2, Diablo 4's cutscenes makes the players feel more involved in the action through having a fully voiced and animated character in these scenes. Instead of mostly relegating character interaction through one-sided conversation, players feel more like active participants this time around in the events that trans in the war between Lilith and Inarius. One scene that specifically held my attention was Lilith coming face to face with Rothma, a deeply important figure to the world of Diablo, and her relationship with this pivotal figure as her son. You have to give it to Blizzard Entertainment. The best story, lore, cinematics, well, I mean, I guess that's debatable. Best cinematic quality you will see in a modern game. If I've learned anything during my time here, it is that what we're looking for and what we need are rarely the same thing. 
Perhaps one of the most significant gameplay changes in Diablo 4 is the addition of a standard dodge to all character classes. While this doesn't sound like a huge change, players will no longer need to wait to unlock a dodge, or dash, or dedicate space on their hotbar, or spend ability points to use one. Instead, everyone is given a single dodge, which evens the playing field when it comes to overall maneuverability. Sorcerers no longer feel sluggish by comparison to the more dexterous rogue, for example, and even the burlish barbarian feels infinitely more agile this time around due to the implementation of this feature, putting it on even playing grounds with the other classes. This dodge can be used in tandem with actual movement abilities like dash, teleport, and leap, opening up even more invincibility frames for players to use to the best of their ability as they dodge wave after wave of devastating attacks thrown their way. These are just some of the biggest changes we found in Diablo 4 during the beta period, but we're almost certain that there will be even more once the game releases in full. For more on our Diablo 4 coverage, check out the 7 features we want to see return, and for everything else, keep it right here on IGN. I don't like the dash. I don't like the dash. I, like I said earlier in the video, am a classical ARPG enthusiast. So, enthusiasts, so what does that mean? I like inventory Tetris. I know people hate that. I like the charms. I like idols. I don't like mounts. I want movement skills. I want waypoints. And all that standardizing just makes classes feel similar when I want them to feel different. So, a lot of this video I agree with. It is uh, Diablo for the modern gamer. Um, I think most content creators and gamers can agree that Diablo 4, which may be good, which may be even great, is definitely more casual. Looking at the skill trees, looking at the close times to MMOs, it is a large net that they are casting to get as many players to play as possible, which is smart from a business standpoint, right? So that is IGN's uh, list. And it's funny, like we were making the joke on the podcast that uh, a lot of content creators for thumbnails or, you know, even websites and news always say like Diablo like, oh, there's a new Diablo like coming out because that buzzword holds so much weight. Is Diablo 4 a Diablo like? It's not like Diablo 1, 2, or 3. That's the video. Two asks at the end. Ask number one. I'm hoping today is the day I have earned your subscription. Hoping today is the day you make the decision to push that little red button. I would really appreciate it. But of course, only if you think I have earned it. And if I haven't earned it, I'm going to work harder for you. Ask number two, check out my Patreon. Thank you to the first 70 members that have signed up. Become an instant ARPG VIP and get Patreon exclusive content at the first link in the description. I get asked a lot, Aaron, what is the best way to support you? Patreon is the best and it's a way I give back. We're having an action RPG VIP only YouTube channel where I'm doing a studio tour this week. You get access to the bonus hour of the podcast. You get in the VIP lounge so we could chit chat every day. You get a special title. You get the ability to win merch. You get so many goodies from Patreon. It is the best way. First link in the description. That's all I've got. Hopefully you're entertained or at least learn something. Aaron out. Mm -hmm.